The diagram below shows the graph of the function f of x equals sine 2x. The line 2y equals 1 is also shown. Now, before I look at the question, I want to explain the equation of the line 2y equals 1. We can rearrange this equation and write it as y equals a half. Now, y equals a half is the equation of a horizontal line passing through a half on the y-axis. A horizontal line has the equation y equals constant, where the constant is the point um, that the horizontal line cuts the y-axis at. So if all points on this line have y equals a half for their y values, no x term appears in the equation of a horizontal line. On the same diagram above, sketch the graphs of g of x equals sine of x and h of x equals 3 sine 2x. Now the sine function has period 2 pi radians. 2 pi radians is 360 degrees. Pi radians is 180 degrees. The sine function has a range from minus 1 to plus 1. So for any value of x, sine x lies between minus 1 and plus 1. So the period is 2 pi. So whatever shape the sine of x function has, it's got to repeat itself from x equals 2 pi onwards. The sine of naught is naught. The sine of pi over 2, which is 90 degrees, is 1. The sine of pi or 180 degrees is naught. The sine of 3 pi over 2 or 270 degrees is minus 1. And the sine of 2 pi is the same as the sine of naught or the sine of 360 degrees, which is naught. So the function repeats itself for x beyond 2 pi. Now let's look at h of x. Now we're already given the graph of sine 2x. h of x is just 3 times sine 2x. So we take the y values for the sine 2x graph and multiply them by 3. So basically we're stretching the graph in the vertical direction. We're stretching it by a factor of 3. Sine 2x, just like any sine function, lies between plus 1 and minus 1. So if we multiply this by 3, multiply everything by 3 here, this inequality gives us minus 3 less than or equal to 3, sine 2x less than or equal to 3. So the 3 sine 2x function, which is called h of x here, lies between minus 3 and 3. Its range is from minus 3 to plus 3. So basically we're just taking the values we get um, from sine 2 of x and just multiply them by 3. So the graph will have the same shape as sine 2x, it's just stretched in the y direction. So when x is naught, well, sine 2x is also naught, but and 3 sine 2x will be naught. Uh, see, we can see the maximum height here is 1. This angle here is actually um, pi over 4, or 45 degrees. And um, the sine of 2 times 45, or the sine of 90 is 1. And then we multiply by 3 to get 3. So I'm just indicating the main points on the graph of h of x. This point will still 3 times naught is naught, 3 times minus 1 is minus 3, 3 times naught is naught, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times naught is naught, 3 times minus 1 is minus 3, 3 times naught is naught, uh, 3 times 1 is 3. Just multiply the main values by 3 and then try to draw a rough curve between them. So I'm showing h of x in blue. Now, in the next question, we are interested in the coordinates of the point P. The point P is a point of intersection between the line 2y equals 1, or y equals a half, and the function sine 2x. So, I'm just writing down f of x here. I'm just calling it y here. So, I'm just writing the, the black graph sine 2x, and the horizontal line, as we saw earlier, has equation y equals a half. 
So to find where these graphs intersect, we just set sine 2x equals a, to a half, because both of them are equal to y, so they're equal to each other. So we have to solve this equation here. So how do we do that? Well, we have to get the inverse sine of a half. Now in degrees, the inverse sine of a half is 30 degrees. Or, if you like, you can write it in radians. Um, 180 degrees is pi radians. So 30 degrees is 1 sixth of pi radians. It's pi over 6 radians. Now the sine of 30 degrees is plus a half, but 30 degrees is not the only angle whose sine is plus a half. So to find the other angles, we look to the cast rule to see which quadrant has positive values for the sine function. Of course, we've already got that an acute angle, an angle between 0 and 90 degrees has positive sine function and uh, the other quadrant is this quadrant here. This quadrant is for angles that are obtuse, angles between 90 and 180 degrees. So if we take a, an angle in here, measured anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis, its sign is going to be positive. Um, we can work it out from this angle here. Reference angle is 30 degrees. So we're looking at 150 degrees. So 2x is either 30 degrees or 150 degrees. So the sine of 150 degrees is also plus a half. So if 2x is 30 degrees or 150 degrees, it means that x could be 15 degrees or 150 divided by 2, which is 75 degrees. We can actually see these values on our diagram. These are the smallest positive values of x um, for which the function sine 2x is plus a half. So we can see the coordinates of this point here have x value 15 degrees. I'll just write it down in degrees. The coordinates of this point here, next largest value is 75 degrees. You can see that there are other values. This value here and here, there's actually an infinite number of values of x for which sine 2 of x equals plus a half. We extend this graph on indefinitely. Now we're interested in point P, and this is where we use the fact that we're dealing with a periodic function. As a matter of fact, we can get point P from the coordinates of this point here, because if we look at one cycle of this graph after this point, this is one cycle, and then so we get another cycle after. So the function repeats itself after P. So we can find point P from this point here by just looking to the period of f of x. So we need to get the period. That's the length of one cycle of it. You can see very easily from the graph that the period is this distance here, which is pi. It's given in the graph. In an earlier video, we saw that the function sine of mx has period 2 pi over m. We put 2 pi over the coefficient of x. In our situation, our function is sine of 2x, so the period is 2 pi over 2, which is pi. But anyway, we can see it here. So we just have to add pi radians onto this angle. Well, pi radians is 180 degrees, so we're adding 180 degrees onto 75. Okay, when we do that, 180 plus 75 is 255 degrees. So P has coordinates 255 comma a half. The Y value of P, of course, is a half. If you want to, you can convert this to radians. Just memorize that 180 degrees is pi radians, so 1 degree is pi over 180. So 255 degrees is 255 multiplied by pi over 180. So to two decimal places, you can write 255 degrees as 4.45 radians. This would be a better way of writing it, actually. Uh, we don't indicate any units for radians. So point P has coordinates 4.45 comma half.